Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. This is KMTV and in today's video we're going to talk about floor and decor holding. We're going to do that by talking about five specific points. The first, the first one is the business model. The second one is the strong execution on their strategic plan. The third one, who is their customer and why it's important to know who their customer is. The fourth one, what do they sell? What do they sell at all? And then the fifth one, the growth ahead. And we're also going to talk about why floor and decor holding might have a massive problem in the years ahead. And with that, sir, let's go straight ahead. Floor and decor investor day 2022. We are successful as a disruptive, high growth special retailer and hardware service flooring and related accessoire because so basically what they are doing is they sell everything that is related to flooring and home improvement but especially flooring and like something to decorate your home to to make it look better this is an amazing example they have these showrooms where they show how you can upgrade your home or how it will look if you use their material I mean, I think that bathroom here looks rather nice. Um, my bathroom definitely does not look like that because, well, I'm not as rich or I'm not rich enough to afford one of these bathrooms. I, I assume it's expensive. I don't know. I've never been to floor and decor. They have three different kinds of customers. So first of all, homeowners, then pros, and then commercial. Pros are obviously people that are a bit more better than just a normal homeowner. And then commercial are obviously people that do use the products of floor and decor on a commercial base. They also have free design services offered by flooring experts. So I think this is a really good thing to stress here because when investing is also very important to know what the business actually is and yeah. is this flooring and decor stuff. So if you have no clue about it as a customer and then you go there and then are the it's two lovely folks helping you to get a vision about how your house might look, how it could be transformed, then you're definitely more willing to spend money on the product of floor in the core rather than if you have no clue and no one is explaining to you or giving you a visualization of how your home could look. So here's the first point, strong execution of strategic plan. Rapid warehouse store growth with 160 stores in 33 states. So floor and decor hold, holding or is only operating in the United States. So there are no stores apart from the United States. I think maybe if we take a large look into the future, there might be more stores in other countries like australia canada canada is obviously the closest mexico but nowadays we only have in stores in the united states and we can see we had a quite significant store growth with 17.8 percent combined annual growth rate in the last six years four years four years you can see that certain states have no stores so i think this is wyoming north dakota south dakota oh god i'm i know that is Oregon. This one here is Oregon. So, guys, I'm from Germany, not so much into US geographics. Strong sales performance over the last five years. So, this is a really, really lovely thing. So, we went from 1.385 billion in sales to 3.434 billion in sales. So, 25.5% combined annual growth rate over this period. And this is a massive growth and it's a really amazing growth. But it also is a growth that comes with super low interest has come with people having this massive DIY trend, especially here, as you can see, the jump from 20 to 2020 to 2021, where everybody was home, where everybody wanted to upgrade their home solid. So over a billion or 50% growth rate. I haven't seen a 50% growth rate in these areas here. Leading to attractive double digit earnings growth. So if we take a look at the EBITDA, are massive growth and same with adjusted earnings per share. Well, guys, what shall I say? This is the type of growth you want to see. And especially in a simple 
store company or home improvement with, with real goods not is not a digital company is a real good selling company and these are massive numbers for these let's say old school business models our total addressable market is larger including adjective set categories i do not know what that word means but it's only in my opinion about the total addressable market and we saw we had a revenue of around 3.5 billion and we have a total addressable market between 49 and 54 billion so there is lots of space to grow in that total addressable market so i see no problem when it comes to growing the market share from 2012 to 2021 we can see that especially in the hard surface the market share definitely grew a lot same with soft surface there the market share decreased but when it comes to other resilience the market share also decreases unfortunately i don't know what market this is because this is not really shown here quite nice but i assume it's the market share of floor and decor holdings so what kind of products they sell next point discipline capital allocation let's come to the next point and the second point that i mentioned earlier we understand our customer typical home owner demographic and profile we can see that the median income of a household of a customer of floor and decor holdings is six ninety six thousand dollars i think that is massive really massive I made a video about how to build a portfolio where I talked about the different incomes, for example, here in Germany compared to the US. And for Germany, that would be whew, crazy. Year home built, so 51% are prior to the 1980s, so they live an average seven years there. And the median home value is 300,000. I think one really important thing is, and this is why I'll talk about that slide at all. If you do not know who your customer is, you can't sell anything to them. So, for example, if you don't know that your customer has a median income of, let's say, 100K, and you offer them products that are way overpriced, you won't be able to sell these products. So you have to make sure that you have products that fit to the income of your customer. Another thing that I think personally is quite nice is that the medium household income for cut off customers of floor and the core holding is actually quite high so you know that those people are actually willing to do something with their home because who does not like to live in a nice home i think we all want to live in a nice home if we can afford it here the typical pro demographic um sales well you mostly under one million when it comes to business numbers of employees below three employees so I think a typical pro customer of Florent Coal Holding is simply a craftsman that has a few customers and, well, tries to make a living with his craftsmanship. Let's come to the third point. And the third point is what do they sell at all? And we can see that if we take a look from 2016 to 2021, the percentage of different things like, for example, tie wood, decorative accessories, installing materials and tools have definitely shifted so for example laminate and luxury vinyl vinyl do you, do you pronounce it vinyl has massively increased on the other side tile has decreased so has wood i am no craftsman so i can't really tell what that has to do but i can tell you that it has changed i personally like wood for the floors but i think this is just a really subjective thing so you may like something else i'm personally just into wood here you can see some of their products well why that is waterproof and everything so yeah nice thing but here you can see some of their decor stuff and some of their brands so let's come to the fourth point and that is the growth ahead and we start with real estate and construction a large and growing retail network so Plan continues 20% uh, new store growth. So they want to achieve 275 stores by 2024. When it comes to those numbers, guys, I'm a bit skeptical. As I said at the beginning of the video, I think store and decor holding, floor and decor holding has 
probably a large problem and this is raising interest and it is high inflation and that is those two things lead to consumers not spending as much pretty example if you have these 96,000 in income and then suddenly everything gets more expensive sure you can you you can still afford it but it's not as easy as it was years ago where you could just be like yeah here's cash so now money's a bit tough so you won't necessarily upgrade your home every two weeks will you so i think that store growth might be a bit too positive but if they continue to do that super i like it so they have 160 stores and they assume that they can open another 340 stores so they have 500 stores in total and this is just such a prank in my opinion so 68 percent of the u.s populations live within 95 minutes so an hour of the floor and the course door here in germany no one no one would even think about driving an hour so i would never drive more than 20 maybe half an hour if i have to go to a specific store but never over an hour but sure in the united states things are a bit different because you're larger a bit a bit larger yeah new store development so you can see a new store it's being built there this is a really interesting slide. What we can see here is from 2011 to 2015, a net investment in a new store cost around 3.5 million. Now we're up to eight to 10 million, and the majority of that is CapEx. The year one sales, back then they were 9 million, now we have 14 to 16 million. The one year EBIT they are grew from 0.9 million to more than 2.5 and the three year EBITDA to from 2.9 million to over five. In other words, that means that in the third year, 50% cash return on the money that you invested. If you ever wondered how you will get rich, that's the way. That is the way you will get rich. Average new stock, class of target, so 25% 20 year return on invested capital. That is really impressive in my opinion, really impressive because, well, it's just a cash cow. It's a ridiculous cash cow. Just the, just the first and third year are almost, so after three years, the, the, the whole story is paid off. After three years, it's only profit, 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 profit. And let's assume they run it for 20 years, then you have 17, maybe you do some, you, you, you use some money for repairments, everything, let's say 15 years just profit that is unbelievable real estate strategy for future growth they build these massive warehouses all over the place um one thing i personally do not like is why is there no solar on the roof literally i think there should be a law that every time a new warehouse as big as this one is built there must be solar all over the place because it's just so smart like why why don't you put solar up there it's so stupid not to do it but and now let's come to the fifth point our best days are yet ahead strong track record under current management so they assume they the size growth so from 2012 to 2021 these massive 10 times growth then adjusted EBITDA are also massive growth 15 times growth so this is unbelievable macro and changing consumer trends underpinning demand aging housing inventory rising home equity values record us wealth blah 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 it's all true um so there are a lot of positive things that lead that, that, that give them that push them up so that what do you call it if like the wind is coming from the back like if you're sailing and the wind coming from the back it makes it easier it's the same here but there are two things in my opinion that makes it really hard for them and that is rising inflation interest rate and existing home sales and affordability i mentioned that in my video how to build a portfolio if money is tough or if money is small on a monthly basis, you, you you simply won't upgrade your home in the last 10 years we had super low interest money was all over the place and now we are going from quantitative easing to quantitative tightening so I assume that in the next years, people will definitely rethink whether they spend a lot of money on their new garden, floor, 
pool, whatever. But in this case, especially on their new home. Here is this massive total addressable market. Yeah, sure, it's a massive market, but again, if people don't want to spend, it, it, maybe they want to spend money, but they can't. Because before you upgrade your floor, again, you make sure that there's food on the table. Otherwise, you won't care about the floor, will you? Continue 20% warehouse format unit growth. So this is their goal of these 500 stores. Let's see whether they reach the 275 in 2024. Building blocks to three year, 25% plus operating income. So on the left, we can see where we are right now. Then the existing store growth, the new store growth, then Westman. So they assume that in 20, 2024, we will end up at 700, 670 to 700 million in income. I would love to see that, but again, I'm pretty skeptical. And as they write down, write down here, does not con contemplate any potential impacts from the war in Ukraine. And I think those impacts might be massive. One thing that I love about floor and decor is low leverage allows for growth investments. They are really, really low in leverage. I hope they stay that way. They have even been cash negative when it comes to um debt so the red is the net debt so in this case minus is that they actually have cash i think there's a really really positive thing expect negative free cash flow in 2022 and 2023 this is i, I assume to their massive investments and modest positive free cash flow in 2024 super fine with that i think when it comes to floor and the core holdings because we're talking about numbers they're not paying out dividend, they're not buying back shares, they're not doing anything like that, but we'll take a look at the share price in a sec. But maybe they should rethink that massive growth strategy with these new stores. Because again, I think the influence of the Ukraine war with food pricing going up massively, with oil prices going up massively, I think consumers won't spend that much on housing upgrades in the near future. Guys, I might be totally wrong, so anyone predicting the future is an idiot, so I am an idiot as well. It's just my opinion, but be aware, I can be totally wrong. Don't take it too serious what I'm saying. Discipline capital location to drive high return on capital. Here we can see uh, new stores, then distribution sensors, technology, existing store. Yeah, I love it if business comes first rather than share buybacks and other things. And what I love about that, the, nowhere here you can even read dividends or share buybacks. So this is one thing that I really, really love about Floor and Decor Holding is they're not talking about these share return, blah, blah, whatever. They're talking about the business. I love that. I really, really love that. First of all, the business. Second, third, even fourth, shareholder satisfaction. Business first. Here are their key acquisition criteria i think they've not acquired any companies in recent times and what i really love about floor and decor holding just one more thing before we go to the share price they talk about the risk not only about the opportunities here we can see inflation supply chain disruption cross margin supply chain is a massive problem then interest rates rising and housing turnover yes employment and wage growth yeah so i think um they are lots of risk right now and with that said let's go straight to the trading view and then we'll get to take a look at the share price and here we are we can see that floor and the call holding went public somewhere in 2017 since then the stock has been a rather nice nice performing stock up here 130 percent to the all-time high almost 400 percent so yeah i think you can't really complain literally always beat the EBIT, uh, the earnings expectance apart from here. Um, but as you can see, the stock is definitely down from the all time high up here. As literally any stock is from November down. So we're all, well, already down 50%. Now we have a market cap of around 7 billion. By the way, I know most of you haven't watched the video till here, but do you want me to talk about market cap and numbers and all of that earlier in the video or do you, is it all right for you to talk about it at the end? Because I certainly don't care that much about market cap and everything. I I really care about the business. And that is, for me, the important thing. 
rather because with financial engineering, I think, in my opinion, you can do so much. A feedback about that topic would be nice. I'm not invested right now. I'm I'm not buying any stock. I'm not selling any options. I'm not buying any options simply because never catch a falling knife. Let's see how the whole thing turns out now. Yeah, the market opens in nine minutes today, by the way, is May 19th. I will upload this video maybe tomorrow, latest next week, Tuesday. That is the 24th of May. Let's see how the market has performed till then, because as you can see, yeah, SPX is already down again a bit, so we'll see. With that said, guys, I really hope you liked the video. Please leave me a feedback. Consider subscribing, maybe even thumbs up with that said. See you soon, guys. Bye.